most of America, I don't know if it's it's by uh, blissful ignorance, but it's very easy to see you walk around and how unhealthy this country is. There needs to be drastic measures to try to help out because obviously there's 330, probably 340 million Americans. 75% of them are overweight, obese, or severely obese. Not everyone. There are a lot of people that are quote unquote lost cause. I believe that. I, I know there's millions of people that will see Regenesance and not think twice and they're just going to continue on with their awful habits and develop these awful chronic diseases or they already have those and they'll pass away from that. I'm, I'm going to, to the folks that will actually start questioning things and will take their health seriously, especially the ones that want to have families or have started families and want to change that for their future bloodline. Make raw milk great again, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the truth. And I mean, if, once you learn about this history of behind, um, how we came to this position that we're in with ter in terms of the corruption and um, just some of the laws that were created in order for us to get to this point here. And um, I mean, I think raw milk is such a great example of that. Like that story is such so perfectly encompassing um, a story of maximizing profit and trying to get as rich as possible versus actually um, what is true what is true and, and um i'll let you elaborate on on the story of raw milk and and how uh that came to be yeah so raw milk i know the word superfood gets thrown out there a lot but i truly believe raw milk to be a superfood um the more i read on just in the 1700s and 1800s even well before that of folks just trying these raw milk cures and curing these ailments and diseases but now we think in America and most of the world, it seems like that doesn't have raw milk uh, legal, that it should be legal. Again, there's no pasteurization. It doesn't take any away of the benefits from raw milk and raw milk will kill us. But when you look at the research and the history of it all, as America was expanding and we became very industrialized and we're actually having major cities such as New York. When you compare that to the rural parts of America at that time, the folks that were drinking raw milk in rural areas were doing just fine. Hardly any health, I don't even, hardly any health issues, if any at all. But then you look into these major cities, such as New York City. So they had awful living conditions, very unsanitary. They had thousands upon thousands of distilleries propping up and to maximize output of milk from cows, they would attach a milk or they would attach a cow around to one of these distilleries, again, in awful conditions, no grass, no sun. They're just tied up, but they're just f f they're fed these nasty grains from these distilleries to just fatten them up and up the production. And that worked. The, the amount of milk that they were producing was much, much higher. But then what happened w was that milk made everyone sick. And if you look at the mortality rates of babies in these cities, it's horrific. But that's because of this nasty milk that was produced through awful conditions. Raw milk isn't the problem. It's the living conditions, what they're fed, how they're treated. That's the problem. That's what causes all these. But we're never told about that. We're never told about swill milk. And this is why I'm for Regenesance, I'm going to be really helping out a lot with raw milk this year and in the coming years with pushing back online and really helping educate because it's it's mind boggling that we've never even told about swill milk. And that made sense at the time why they did pasteurize milk in cities, because that was needed. It was needed. It definitely yeah. was because then after pasteurization happened, then mortality rates declined. But now we're still in the same thinking of it still should be illegal and pasteurized milk is the only thing we should need, which isn't true at all. We have better conditions. On my podcast, I had Mark McAfee of Raw Farm out in California, one of the largest raw dairies. They 
make they do so much to ensure the quality and the care of the animals and all the testing they do he even started raw milk institute to even further advance research on this but then also help with other dairies that want to do this to ensure the conditions for these cows but then also all of the machinery they use is sanitary to ensure we get this raw milk because raw milk is incredible for us it's all these beneficial bacteria and enzymes for our gut. I know that gets tossed around a lot too with gut health, but that's very true with raw milk. It he, Again, Mark McAfee, for example, whenever I asked him on my podcast to give an example of a story of a customer that raw milk healed them, he talked about how this woman had severe Crohn's disease. By six months, she was off all of her medications from raw milk and, and plus whole foods, but she was drinking a lot of raw milk. And there's so many examples of that that continue to hear. And it's just mind boggling because with pasteurization, now people believe that dairy as a whole causes lactose intolerance and all these other issues like asthma and acne. But again, with gut health, it all makes sense whenever you ingest stuff that's unnatural to your body, it responds. I mean, that's why all these skin conditions, a lot of the source is just awful gut health. And that's the case with, with raw milk because whenever you pasteurize it, it kills this enzyme called lactase. And that gives us the ability to digest lactose. What's infuriating as I continue to see more and more products in the grocery stores, for example, I see butter that's lactose-free butter and it's pasteurized dairy, but you look at the steps that they explain. Step two, they add the enzyme lactase back into it. And so you're thinking, okay, they're literally doing what's in raw milk, but not just that. Pasteurization kills a lot of the beneficial vitamins and minerals or significantly reduces them like vitamin A, C, and plenty of others. And so the more I learn about this, the more it's just like, what the hell have we been talked about this whole time? And so I, I really believe that this should be legal in all states. You should be able to make the decision yourself if you want pasteurized or raw, because they're still like Alexander Family Farms. They're not raw milk, but that dairy is still incredible for you. Dairy as a whole should be in our diets. There's so many benefits of it. Cheese, like raw sheep cheese and, and raw cow cheese is incredible for your gut as well. And so I'm just gonna leave it at that because it. I actually just bought about 10 books on, on various historical pieces on raw milk because it just continues to blow me away of how incredible this is and how our ancestors Knew that from the beginning once we domesticated cows, but all of a sudden we're the, we're the most advanced since it's been, but, but yet it should be pasteurized and we don't even question it. Yeah. Isn't there some story there? I don't, I don't know the truth to this, but about Rockefeller um, wanting to gain a monopoly over the dairy industry. So, he lobbied for raw milk to be illegal so that all these small family friendly farms uh, wouldn't have the resources in place to be able to afford the pasteurization process. Is, is there some truth to that? There definitely is. I mean, with, with Rockefeller, he tried to do that in a lot of industries like education too, but also the Rothschilds, because it, I think it was in the 40s, he gave a speech in England about raw milk needing to be pasteurized and outlawed. 